So why are visual aids useful? We saw it today. Jay and Kawai, you guys go up here and just try to give a presentation without any PowerPoint, without anything in front of you. Jay, you had a prop. Why did you bring a prop? To the main audience the and that's exactly what a visual aid is. It's something to help the audience relate to what you're trying to say and get across. Yeah. Right? Yeah, when you were doing your presentation about cooking, I mean, yeah, you were giving us the recipe on coconut milk with chicken, right? How much time? Coconut milk and chicken? Yeah. Exactly. You could have used the projector as a pot. Right? Or you could have used the bag as a pot, you could have used the mouse as a potato. You could have used the piece of paper as tomatoes. Toss everything into the pot, let it sit for 20, 30 minutes, and all of a sudden now you've got a nice stew. Instead of us, the audience, having to visualize. What happens when you try and force the audience to visualize without anything for the audience to relate to? What do you guys do? If I keep talking and don't give you any examples whatsoever, mm -hmm. then the audience can imagine it. That. <laughs> you know, it's a, but not that it's a, yeah, and you know, it's a, the audience will imagine something else. And if the audience has to imagine, if you have to work to try and understand what I'm telling you, then you're going to give up. What's in it for you? So why are you here to learn presentations? You're here because you want to learn something effective to help you out. So most all of what we know comes to us visually. We are all very visual learners. When we see something, we take in an entire array of information. When we read something, it's one word at a time that we process and comprehend. But when we take a look at an ocean, when we take a look at a mountain, when we take a look at scenery, we take in the entire scenery at once. So what we're going to talk about today is kinds of visual aids. What kinds can you use? Preparing them, how to prepare them, and then how to present them and what types to present. So the kinds of visual aids you can use. You can use objects, you can use models. That lamp could be a visual aid if I'm talking about lighting. This bookcase could be a visual aid if I'm talking about structure. If I'm talking about uh, photos or drawings, I can actually use a chart over here and start drawing. I have a whiteboard at my disposal. I can start using the whiteboard as part of my visual aid to be able to draw numbers. If we wanted to go over Disney's cultural exchange program, you pay how much, you get how much, and draw the numbers out. Okay. Right? By the way, they're taking advantage of your emotion. I'm sorry, but that's just what it is. <laughs> Another way to do it is using graphs or bar charts. And I use a key here. If you're going to use a graph or a pie chart, stick to two to three different colors. Your graph itself, your pie chart itself, because as many can have as many different values as you want to represent, but make it visually appealing for the audience's eyes. And I'll show you examples of that and what that means later on. You can use a video. We're going to watch that today. We're going to see what a video is today. A good video presentation and a bad video presentation. Why are video important? Why is a video a good tool to use during a presentation? Yeah, if I show you a movie during a presentation, why is that good and why can that be bad? I show you a video that's too long, now you start to not pay attention. Then the video becomes the focal point of the presentation. I show you a short video, now I grasped everything I need to tell you, tell you in a short little window. We'll talk about that today. And then you yourself are the visual aid. If you're teaching a information class, how to do yoga poses, how to deliver CPR, how to cook, you yourself can be the visual aid itself. So the kinds of visual aids, we talked about pie chart. Is this a very pretty pie chart? It looks like crap, like what the heck is going on here? What, I, I don't get it. Yeah, exactly, your facial expression is perfect, like what's going on? Exactly, like what the hell? Okay, this one makes a little more sense. Wow, color distribution is there, I get it, there's clear concrete lines, my point is made. Bad, better, make sense? 
So if you yourself, the speaker, want to be the visual aid, you can show different poses. Me, myself, I am a visual aid for my presentations because I want you to use body language, gestures, I want you to walk around. I want you to make the eye contact. How often do I look back at my presentation? <laughs> Doesn't matter if I'm a professional or not. I'm not even a professional. I'm no different than you guys. I just have a little more experience. That's it. Or how many of you know how to deliver CPR? What is CPR? Yeah, exactly. It's how you save somebody's life if they're choking on food, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or if they drown in the water. Exactly. Deliver CPR. You might have to do this if you go to Disney, because people might pass out from the heat. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be like that. <laughs> Other kinds of visual aids. Let's say I'm telling a story about a gem that I found in the deep nether regions of South America. Oh my gosh. It'd be kind of cool, right? If I can find it. Uh, oh. Oh. Right, I found this while traveling in South America. You went down deep in the Patagonia. You took it back? No. <laughs> of course. Look at this thing. It's amazing. That, wouldn't you take this thing back? Of course you would. This thing is awesome. It's a memory of South America. Right? You took so, it back from the nature? It's a rock. It'll go back. It doesn't matter. Now, the thing to remember about visual aids, if I have a physical piece that is like this, or if I have something a little bit bigger, like this. You guys remember Mike Brzezowski? Yeah. Right by something bigger like this. What you do not want to do, do not do this. Do not pass it around the audience. Do not give it to the audience. Why? <laughs> That's one. That's a big one, right? <laughs> they might break it, they might steal it. But more so, what happens? You, the audience members. The audience doesn't attend to you. Yeah, exactly. You just lost the audience's attention to this guy. This guy is now more important than you are when you're presenting. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh my god, look at this thing, it's so cool. Who cares about the presenter? I now have the object in my hands. Right? So the audience, remember, they're like little children. Right? They chase after yarn, and this is yarn. So instead, you're better off showing the visual aid and showing the larger image of it. Right? Make sense? So no, I'm not going to pass around Mike Wazowski. So there's bad videos and bad ways to be able to present information. And I'm going to actually jump into a video. We're going to dissect the video and show you how bad or good it is. Got the audience laughing early, got them paying attention to what we did early on, 
but also gave something incredible. Today, Jay gave a presentation on time management, everything that we have a problem with today, right? How do you fix time management? Well, you figure out, A, what your priorities are, and then you put your time into certain buckets and categories, your A, B, C, D. By the way, how often or how much did your 34 hours of movie dropping drop down to? How much did it drop? Uh, probably 34 hours. Yeah, from 34 hours, where did it go to? You said you were at 34 hours a week of watching movies, right? Yeah. So did it drop? Yeah, it dropped. To what? Mm, it dropped to me uh, an eight hour. Uh, I will do eight acting at one. No, how many hours did your D task become? D task? Uh, I did now they one, one hour per day. Right, 34 hours a week to one hour a day, that's seven yeah, hours seven a week. Seven hour, yeah. Right, that's a dramatic improvement. Should have run that one. So that's why I want to bring this up, is looking at uh, bad presentations versus good presentations, visual aids can help you, uh, but also your body in and of itself, who you are, is a visual aid in and of itself. So use your language, use your body. You have hands, you have feet. A lot of people out there don't have that ability. Most people just have their voices. So use your body, walk around. So what do you do to prepare for your visual aids? You prepare in advance. Obviously you have to know when you're going to use your visual aids, what you're going to do. Today I had a bad example. Today I, my bad example was I wasn't prepared with that second video, even though I wanted to show it, I couldn't remember where it was. That was my bad on the presentation. And that's how, how did that affect the flow? The second I couldn't find that video, the second I didn't have something next lined up for you, what did you guys the audience do? You started chattering amongst yourselves, you started talking amongst yourselves. Not paying attention to me, the speaker, but paying attention to yourselves. Right? That's what happens to your audience. When you're not prepared, when you don't have the next thing to say, your audience will drop out. So plan in advance when you use them, what to say about them, and keep them simple. Majority of the time through this course, you're gonna use pictures on the wall. You may very, very infrequently have a small stone from South America that you wanna bring in and show the class. Or you might have Mike Wazowski because you really want people to have some eye contact. It's kind of hard to avoid the eye contact in this guy. <laughs> if they're too big, if they're too unwieldy, if I bring in, let's say I'm doing a human anatomy course, and I bring in a skeleton, and I start pointing at objects on the skeleton, now that skeleton becomes a presentation, and I become the backdrop. That becomes a problem. Make sure they're large enough for the back of the room to see. The little stone. I brought in two visual aids because this little stone is too small for the back of the room to see. Like for you guys, it's really tough to see this. But that's why I had images earlier on to be able to show you what this looks like larger. Right? That's why I brought in these two pictures to show you, hey, now you can see what this little stone is in comparison to the back of the room. This is exactly what I had in my hands. And again, do not pass your visual aids out. Yes, you might risk them getting stolen, broken, but more so you risk you will lose the audience's attention. 100% guarantee the audience. I'll pass this around. We'll watch what happens with the audience. What happens with the audience? Oh, see, now his attention is on the stone. It's not on me anymore. Automatically. And that's a problem. Pass it around. Keep passing it. Keep passing it. Right? And you can see, now your attention goes to the stone. What am I going to get at next? What am I going to get at next? What am I going to get at next? Right? So do not pass your visual aids around. They will end up taking away from your presentation in and of itself. No matter how pretty and shiny the stone is, it doesn't make a difference. Please pass it back up to the front of the room. Right, and I want you guys to see how your retention span, just even by calling it out, by even telling you what you're going to do in advance, you cannot prevent yourself from looking at the stone no matter what. And that's what your audience will do if you have a visual aid. So don't pass anything around. Uh, and obviously look at the amount of text. So one thing I've been focusing on or emphasizing on is when today we have the digital images and all the cell phones, the PDAs and everything in the back, right? You switched the diversion to technology as one of the reasons for the dictionary. Your immediate attention, you as a presenter, your focus went to the audience because you didn't have any words on the screen to look at to save you. You moved out to the audience. You were like, oh, I'm not gonna get any help back here. It's just a picture, crap. Okay, I have to look at the audience to tell them what I need to say. So pictures not only help you, but help the audience as well to maintain that eye contact. 
and use effective colors and fonts. Uh, I'm going to show you really, really bad examples. We used to see a lot of this in class in the beginning, remember? The first few weeks of class, this used to be a slide. All text. Ugh, we can all read. Great. I'm glad you can read as well. Don't do this. Far cleaner, far more effective, far simpler. You have a watch, you have money. Save time, save money. Really simple message. And then fonts. Sometimes the fonts just become way too unwieldy. These suck. These are horribly bad. They're detracting. They don't do anything. But these clean, easy to read. No problems whatsoever. Not too fancy. This is something, you guys have Halloween in Thailand? Right, October 31st, everyone dresses up like little angels or devils kind of thing. Right, this is Halloween fonts. This is good presentation. And then don't try to mix too many fonts together. It makes the presentation look really, really ugly. So far, no one's doing this. But in the future, just remember that unless you're trying to make a point, don't use multiple fonts at the same exact time. Right now, I'm trying to make a point. Using too many fonts is a bad idea. Okay. So use physical or with that. Sorry, when it comes to physical visual aids, again, show it in your hands. Blow up a larger picture of it, hold it in your hand, be like, yeah, last time Mike was asking and I, we were hanging out, suddenly came by and we all partied until 3 in the morning and we tucked taped ourselves to the ceiling. Whatever it might be. Um, only, only show these when you're talking about them, not the entire time. If I held this up the entire time, you, the audience, are thinking, okay, what the heck is he going to do with that thing in his hand? Why does he keep holding it when he's not talking about it? I'm so confused. Is there a purpose to him? Like, I can see your eyes wandering back and forth between me and this, me and this, me and this. Like, okay, do something with this already, right? I can see it in the eyes already. So if you're not going to talk about it, don't hold it. Right? Explain visual aids, what they're there for. I went to South America, picked up a stone. I want to tell you about my trip to South America, the Patagonia. It was beautiful. Um, talk about your audience, uh, not about your visual aid, sorry, talk to your audience, not to your visual aid. If I kept talking to, oops, 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 if I kept talking to this as opposed to to you, the audience, how effective is that going to be? Not very, right? Answer oh, thank you. How effective is that going to be? Not very effective at all. And check the room, check the equipment, make sure that everything works. If you have a visual aid, like we need a projector. This is a visual aid in and of itself, right? We use this every class. What if this doesn't work today? How effective are we gonna be presenting ideas? Today's class, half and half. Two of you, sorry, one of you would have suffered, but three of you would have been fine, <laughs> right? So make sure your visual aids actually work. And that's it. Any questions on visual aids? Pretty simple, right? How often are you gonna use visual aids? Really? I like using visual aids because actually it draws the audience in, it makes the story feel real, it makes it concrete, it's tangible. Right, had you brought in a cooking pot, and had you brought in plastic vegetables, or had you made this your makeshift pot, and had you had objects on the table as your makeshift vegetables, that would have made the cooking presentation much more. Okay, pretend right now that this is 15 minutes. Okay, when I slap my hands like this, this is 15 minutes. Okay, when I do this six times, it's 30 minutes. Okay, we're done, now we can eat. All right. What's the consistency? Oh, it's like the water in that jug right there. It'll look just like that, except a few more things are gonna be inside of it. Just imagine that right there. That's a little pot of coconut milk with tomato, with potato, with chicken, all that good stuff. You've got two pots right there. You don't need a PowerPoint presentation. Again, what is a PowerPoint presentation? What is the purpose of a PowerPoint presentation? Visual aid. That's it. That's all this is, is just a visual aid. That's it. It's an effective visual aid. It's the majority of what we can use to be able to convey our point but it's not the only thing. Use the entire room to your advantage as a visual aid. Okay. 